This is the Eastward Update. I'm Derwin L. Montgomery. Leave your Facebook comments and questions below and we'll respond to them. The City of Winston-Salem is conducting a housing study as we plan housing for the future. The effort is being led by Community Development, which has a new director, Ms. Marla Newman. Ms. Newman, it is great to have you with us. Great to have you joining the team here in Winston-Salem. Um, as we jump into a conversation, just tell us a little bit about yourself, where you came from, and, and, and what you're doing now. Okay. Well, I moved here from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Uh, I'd had my own consulting business called Blueprints Consulting, and I did community development planning and urban planning work. Prior to that, I was the executive director of a statewide nonprofit policy group called the Louisiana Housing Alliance. So I've uh, been doing the community development work now for about 20 years, and uh, I'm just really excited and passionate about it and the opportunity to come here and serve the citizens of Winston-Salem. Well, we're definitely glad to have you here with us. Um, Community development impacts the lives of people in many ways across this community, and so um, I'm sure people are excited to get to know you in the community, get to know the work you're doing. And so you jumped in um, uh, head first, feet first, hands first, um, <laughs> doing work and engaging. And so tell us a little bit about some of the things that you're working on right now. Well, uh, a few things. Uh, one, we're doing an assessment of our department, first and foremost. Uh, one of the things that I uh, am stressing uh, as I get my feet wet, so to speak, is, is the fact that we have to deliver superior customer service. And so we're doing an assessment of the department to see where we can enhance our work uh, and, and then better serve our, our community. So with that, for instance, we're looking at uh, our lending programs. Of course, we have our rehab program that we've had for a number of years, but uh, also uh, with the TURN program that uh, is financed by the bonds from a few years ago, we're looking at how can we enhance both of those. Uh, I inherited a backlog, and uh, so how do we shift our systems internally so that we can not only uh, get rid of the backlog but prevent getting backlogs going forward. So we're looking at potentially changing how we accept applications. Mm -hmm. uh, do we do it on a rolling basis as we've been doing it or do we go to uh, like two times a year that like some of our peer cities do. Uh, we're also looking at how we might be able to streamline the applications to make them easier for people to fill out. And uh, we've been also completing applications manually, so by hand. Mm. How can we uh, utilize technology, for instance, to streamline that process as well? You can uh, maybe do them on the computer and email them, or possibly even online through some kind of web portal. So we're looking at that as, as one particular way that we might be able to enhance or improve our customer service. Uh, in another area, we're looking at code enforcement. Mm -hmm. We know that we have a lot of properties that, that need attention. Which is the number one thing that I get in my office is, is challenges and issues around code enforcement. And I'm sure some of my council members are the same way in terms of calls that they get, but go ahead. Yes, yeah, so uh, certainly wanting to make sure that um, we stay on top mm -hmm. of making sure that uh, the properties that need to be demolished are demolished in a timely manner but also uh, making sure that when we send out notices of violations that the information that we have with regard to addresses of property owners as compared to what the physical location right. is, making sure that those things match so that someone's not getting a notice of violation but they're really not the owner anymore mm -hmm. or vice versa. So that's another area that we're particularly concerned about as well as those chronic violators. Uh, we have an extensive list of chronic violators and one of the things that we've noticed is that uh, a number of the citations over and over again, some of those same people are folks who have properties that are ripe for demolition. All right. and, and just for the good of the public, mm -hmm. what does it mean to have a code violation? That means that, uh, especially if you're looking at a house, mm -hmm. uh, that the house is not meeting minimum housing standards. So we have problems with the roof or the walls or the foundation, windows, doors, things of that nature. Right. And they and people, they, they don't meet the habitable living standards mm -hmm. that, that we need. And it's a minimum code. Right. So I, I want to stress that it's the minimum standards. So, uh, but the, the code says that there are certain things that must be in place for a home to be habitable and when you receive a code violation that means something is amiss with meeting that minimum standard. And there's there's another big project that's going on right now and kind of evaluating housing in mm -hmm. the community. Right. So what's happening with that? Okay so the housing study uh, has been underway uh, for a while now. Uh, we are actually this Thursday um, 
working with a group of consultants from Enterprise Community Partners. They will be here assisting us with two public meetings. One will be uh, Thursday morning at 11.30 and the other is Thursday evening at 6.30. They're the same meetings, but we're offering them at two times a day to uh, better accommodate uh, the schedules of people who work. And they basically are asking on our behalf what is it that we need? What is it that we'd like around housing? Uh, we know that different wards, different parts of the city have different needs, but what exactly are those needs? Be it from the size of housing to the cost of housing uh, and the kinds of amenities and accessibility for uh, our, our families who may have a, a disabled person in the household or maybe elderly and, and we need some universal uh, accommodation. So what is it that we need? Where even do we need it? Um, I know there's a lot of development going on uh, in and around downtown, but uh, there are needs throughout our community. Right. How can we best identify what those needs are? So we're asking the public to come out and tell us what their vision is and what their needs are. Yep, that's one of the things that I'm very excited about. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the results of the housing study, um, I think will drive us um, not just for next year, but I think for, for years ahead in terms of how do we allocate funds um, in the community to make sure that we are meeting the housing needs. Um, it's important to me not just in terms of the, the work I do as city council, but my day job as well. Uh, I come to understand that housing makes a great difference um, in individuals' economic standing. Mm -hmm. um, that when you have individuals spending 60, 70 percent of their monthly income um, on meeting their housing needs, it means that they don't have the resources to spend on their everyday needs, uh, which damages their overall economic stability. And so um, in this community now, we know that that's one of the challenges we have, and I hope this study will come to help us understand it better um, so that we can actually begin to um, dig ourselves out of the challenges that we have. Correct. And, and we really see it as a framework, mm -hmm. okay, kind of like a blueprint. Uh, and, and we take the information that they provide us, and then together we say what makes the most sense in terms of developing strategies. And the irony is we're also in the process of doing our uh, public hearings and meetings for the consolidated plan. And so having these things happen on parallel tracks is probably uh, a good thing for us uh, because one can inform the other. And, and then this way we can better even align our federal dollars mm -hmm. to help uh, leverage our local dollars and, and get the real impact that we need. Right. So if people want to know more about um, what's happening in community development programs that are available for them to access, mm -hmm. what, what will they do? How can they get that information? A couple of ways, of course, we can always come to the city's website, uh, cityofws.org. Uh, we have special sites for the housing study, so you can do a backslash for the housing study. Uh, we can do that as well for the TURN program. You just do cityofws.org backslash TURN. Uh, and then you can always call us at, uh, and I'll always uh, struggle with, with the numbers sometimes, so th this tells you I'm still new, and that is 727-8000. So we can, you can always call our office and someone will be able to assist, and I anyone can ask for me as well. Uh, so I'll, I'll end with a question to you. Sure. Um, and that is, uh, coming into this role, new into this community, mm -hmm. what is one of your biggest hopes that you'll be able to make a difference in in the community? the level of customer service, uh, how we respond to the needs of the residents. When they call us, we want to be responsive, uh, timely and effectively. Uh, that's probably my biggest hope, is that we are able to meet the needs as they are presented to us. Um, I have a, a lot of hopes and, and needs, but that's probably the biggest, is that we really, we really meet people where they need us to be. Well, and that, and that makes a big difference when people know that when they call, that people respond and that they try to make a difference in their concerns. Mm -hmm. So uh, that, that, that's great, and I think the community will be grateful for, for those improvements that you're moving towards in the community. I thank you so much for, for joining us and sharing the information about what's happening, what's going on. We look forward to all the great work that you're already doing and that you'll continue to do in the community. Thank, thank you, you for having me. Glad to. That's the Eastward Update. Remember to leave your comments or questions below, and we'll respond.